If you search through YouTube, you can find thousands of wonderful makeup tutorials from licensed makeup artists to the self-taught artists like myself. Since I'm always giving people my suggestions on products, I thought it might be nice to suggest some of my favorite makeup gurus. These creators are truly artists and help to make you beautiful inside and out. So for the next year, you'll be seeing me recreate one of my favorite makeup looks from gurus that I subscribe to here on YouTube once every week. That's 52 looks from 52 of my favorites. So let's get started on this week's beauty gurus from A to Z. Welcome back for week two. This week, the feature beauty guru is Allison Anderson, AKA Amarix. Since I have brown eyes, I'm always on the lookout for great purple and plum looks to complement them. So today I'll be recreating Allison's smoldering plum makeup look. It's a very smoky purple eye with a hint of shimmer. It's great for fall and winter or for a night out depending on how dark you like to take it. I challenged myself by using only products I already have at home. Since most of this look is drugstore, it was really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm using Jessie's Girl Cosmetics Eye Primer for my base. This drugstore primer is great for making shadows stay true to color and it lasts all day. I apply a little bit with the wand and then I just blend it in with my finger. I try to make sure to blend it in really well so there aren't any streaks or bumps where the eyeshadow will catch on to and it's nice and smoothed out. Next, I'm taking Night Owl from Tati's Love of Color collection and I'm applying it as a base for my crease color. I apply the pencil into the crease making sure I don't go too high and then I blend it out with a dense crease brush. This pencil is super saturated and is really intense so a little goes a long way. Make sure when you're blending it that you don't go too high and that you keep it concentrated right there in the crease. I'm using my standard medium brown shadow as my transition. In this case it's Dance the Tides from NYX and this will just help bring some warmth to the cool toned eye look as well as help the shadows apply evenly and transition smoothly into one another. I use a fluffy blending brush to take this into the crease and just above Night Owl. Since I don't have a smoldering plum eyeshadow from L'Oreal, I opted to use this deep burgundy color from ColourPop's Super Shock Collection. The shade is called Central Perk and is a deep matte shadow. I take this with a fluffy blending brush and I apply it directly over Night Owl. I'm using small circular motions to apply the shadow so that it's applied well but that it's also nicely blended around the edges. With a clean blending brush, I'm going to go ahead and blend all of those products together. You want to make sure that there are no harsh lines and where each product meets one another. It's almost like creating a sunset right there on your eye. There. Next I'm taking Maybelline's Color Tattoo in the shade Fuchsia Fever and I'm applying this to my eyelid with my fingertips. This is the perfect base for the shadow that I'm going to be applying next and it contrasts with the crease colors perfectly. Now for a pop of color. I'm using a Ben Nye shadow in Cosmic Violet. As you can see, this shadow is a bright violet with a dual chrome of purple and blue. It also has a bit of sparkle. I apply the shadow onto the lid with a flat shadow brush and I make sure to take it down close to the lash line. This is one of my favorite shadows to play with since it looks different whenever you move your head. With Central Perk, I'm going back in and redefining the crease. The crease can get lost with blending and applying lid colors, so I'm just taking a little bit more onto the same brush I used before and using windshield wiper motions, I'm just deepening the crease. I'm taking this sparkly eyeshadow from NYX called Ash and I'm using a small detail brush and applying it to the inner corner of my eye just to give it a little bit of highlight and a little bit of sparkle. And I'm going in with this warm cream color from NYX, it's called I Have a Headache, and I'm applying it with a flat shadow brush right beneath the brows as a highlight. I'm just going to go ahead and take this matte color directly beneath the brow and blend it out. I'm going back in with the eye pencil Night Owl and I'm applying this to my lower lash line as a base. You want to just apply the smallest bit of color there and if you need to you can also blend it out with a small pencil brush. 
Right over top of Night Owl, I'm applying Cosmic Violet with a small smudge brush. This helps to bring a bit of smokiness to the lower lash line and it also adds some interest since the combination of the two products adds definition and marries the upper and lower lash lines together. I'm taking my L'Oreal Infallible Gel Liner and a small angled brush to line my upper lash line. I use small strokes beginning on the inner part of the eye, working my way towards the outside. I do hold my skin taut so that the brush doesn't skip over the lash line. I want the product to apply smoothly. I try to follow the natural shape of my eyelid and I keep the product as close to the lashes as possible. When I get to the outer corner, I add a little bit of a flick. For my lower lash line, I'm using Milani's Liquid Eye in black. I take the pencil over the waterline and make sure to keep it close to the lashes. This helps to give a thicker look to the lower lash line. I'm trying out CoverGirl's new Plumpify Mascara in Very Black. So far, I'm liking the mascara and I'll let you guys know if it's any good after using it for a bit. I apply the mascara to the upper and lower lashes by pushing the applicator against the base of my lashes and then wiggling the wand as I turn it and move towards the end of my lashes. Since the shadows on this look are intense and dark, I'm adding Ardell Dummy Wispy Lashes in wine to make sure that my lashes don't get lost in the mix. I applied a bit of Revlon Lash Glue to the lash band and waited about 20 seconds and then I applied the lashes to my lash line. I pushed the middle of the band in as close to my lashes as possible and then I pulled the outer corner into place and finally I pushed the inner lash band into place. I use my fingers to make sure the lashes are sitting exactly where I want them and to also help curl them upwards. For my cheeks, I'm applying Face Atier's blush in the shade Tangerine. It's a beautiful peachy shade that will brighten up my face. I use an angled blush brush to apply this to the backs of my cheeks and up towards my hairline. I make sure to blend this product for a soft, flush look. Next, I'm taking NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Antwerp. This beautiful pinky nude shade will definitely balance out the deepness of the eyes. I use the doe foot applicator and line and apply that product to my lips. I'm taking Revlon's Lip Lacquer Gloss in the shade Petal Light over top of Antwerp. This gloss brightens up the lip color just a bit and it adds a great amount of shine without being tacky. So this is the finished recreation of Allison's Smoldering Plum look using the products I have in my own makeup collection. Not everybody can run out and buy every makeup product used in the tutorial and this just goes to show that you can definitely use the makeup you have at home to recreate a beautiful makeup look. You can even trade out colors for ones that you love more. So I hope you guys will give this a try. I'll link off Allison's channel below so that you can check out more of her videos. I hope you guys enjoyed week two of Beauty Gurus from A to Z and we'll come back for week three. As always, I want you guys to be kind to yourselves. Pick out one thing that you love about yourself this week and embrace it. And remember, don't ever be afraid to be your perfectly imperfect you. Take care guys. Bye for now. If you like this look and you want to see the original video I took my inspiration from, click on the video above. If you'd like to connect with me, all of my links are in the description box below. Thank you to all of the wonderful YouTube artists that bring so much beauty into our lives. Take care and I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.